Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Warframe Damage video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about damage effectiveness. I briefly mentioned damage effectiveness in my damage videos going over physical damage as well as the elemental damage types. And in those videos, I just gave a basic grade of okay, fair, or good. But here I'm going to talk about what damage effectiveness actually is and how it affects the game. And honestly, in 99% of circumstances, you're not going to really need to worry about how damage effectiveness works in detail. And that's mostly just because most content in the game is not going to be hard enough for you to really min-max with damage effectiveness. The most relevant example that comes to mind is definitely the Eidolons, where damage effectiveness actually plays a big role in how you build your weapons. But for just regular gameplay missions, it's really not that important. And honestly, you can go through the entire star chart without actually having to understand how it works, which I think DE is acutely aware of because they don't really have any real information on this in the game other than these little pluses and minuses that you see after scanning an enemy into the codex. So let's just use the Hydralis here as an example because I'm going to be talking about it later. You can see here that it has different pluses and minuses for its shield, alloy armor, and robotic, and each of these pluses and minuses are for different damage types, right? So you can see on the robotic it has puncture, electric, and radiation as pluses, and slash and toxin as minuses. Uh, now for each plus and minus here, it's just 25%. Uh, I don't know why they don't just say plus 25% or plus 75%, but you know, whatever. That's just how they chose to represent it in the game. So if you want a real basic understanding of how damage effectiveness works, you can just look at the pluses and the minuses on certain enemy types, and you'll see what's effective against them and what they're resistant to. But there's a whole nother layer to this, and that's that if an enemy has armor, your damage effectiveness is going to count for the armor as well as the health combined. Now as for shields, shields aren't affected by armor at all. So if you see a plus effectiveness against a shield type, then that effectiveness is just going to be what your damage is multiplied by. So if it's like 1 plus for 25%, you're just going to get 25% increased damage against the shield. If it's 3 pluses for plus 75%, you're going to get 75% increased damage against the shield. So understanding damage effectiveness against shields is pretty basic and hopefully that makes sense. And damage effectiveness will apply the same way if an enemy has health but no armor. So it'll just be the plus 75 or plus 25 or plus 50. It's not going to be affected again by armor, which hopefully at this point in the video makes sense and it's pretty basic because it's about to get a lot more complicated when we add armor into the mix. And that's because damage effectiveness against armor works in two different ways. The first way is it will increase your damage against an armor type. So if you have like a plus 75%, the enemy's going to be taking 75% more damage of that type than it would if, say, it was neutral against that damage type and didn't have a plus or a minus. The second part of damage effectiveness against armor, and the most impactful, is that it will ignore whatever percent of armor that it's effective against. So if we take a look at the Hydralist here that has plus 75% damage effectiveness for radiation, that radiation damage is going to ignore 75% of the Hydralist armor. So when the Hydralist spawns, it typically has 1,456 alloy armor. But if we were to then use radiation damage against that alloy armor, the radiation damage would act as though the Hydralist only had 364 armor. That's the difference between the alloy armor blocking 82.92% of the damage with a non-radiation shot and only 54% of the damage with a radiation shot. Which is why for the Eidolons we try to use as much radiation damage as possible and strip as much of the armor off as possible. And I have a whole nother video that goes over that and I'm not going to be talking about how to strip armor here. But I'll link to the other video above if you're curious about how armor calculations work. And the damage effectiveness of a single shot is going to apply differently depending on what elements you're dealing. So if you're using a weapon like the Lanka against the Eidolons with pure radiation damage, you only need to worry about the radiation because that's the only damage type you're dealing. But if you were to use another weapon like the Rubico, which I think a lot of people have started using more often, it's going to have impact, puncture, slash, and probably cold on top of that. Meaning that every single shot you're going to have five different damage effectivenesses against the Eidolon. And I'll list them here, but basically we're just really focusing on the radiation for this video because it's a good example of how damage effectiveness works with armor. Because if we look back to the Hydralis here, you'll see that the alloy armor has plus 75% radiation damage, and the robotic health also has plus 25% radiation damage. Now these two numbers become combined when you look at the total damage effectiveness to the Eidolon. Now what do I mean by combined? Basically, if you just want a very simplified example of this, you just take the damage multiplier to the armor, and then you multiply that with the damage multiplier to the health. So here we have 1.75 for the radiation damage to the armor times 1.25 for the radiation damage to the health, which gives us a total of 2.18 damage. Now this damage calculation completely ignores the fact that the target actually has armor, but for this let's just pretend that the target enemy has one armor, which would make this 2.18 multiplier pretty accurate. And this is why we build our weapons for radiation against the Eidolons, because the radiation portion of our shots are actually going to be dealing 118% increased damage against them, which makes radiation damage far and away the best damage type against Eidolons. And I will say here that not many targets in the game have the same damage weakness to their health and armor. 
It just so happens that some of the tankiest enemies in the game, the Eidolons, have this, and that makes our radiation damage very, very strong. Now on the opposite spectrum of this, let's take a look at an enemy that has weakness to its armor, but a resistance to its health, and that's the Hemocyte. The Hemocyte's an enemy unique to the Operation Plague Star event, and it's only going to be around during that event. And honestly, this is basically a unicorn example for damage effectiveness. There's not another enemy in the game that actually works this way, and I'm going to be showing you how strange it actually is. So if we take a look at the Hemocyte here, you can see that its armor, Infested Sinew, has a plus 50% weakness to radiation damage. Now remember, this plus 50% will actually ignore 50% of the Hemocyte's armor. However, if we look at the fossilized health here, it takes negative 75% radiation damage. Which is why on first look, I think a lot of people build their weapons for radiation when they're fighting the Hemocyte. But if we use the same basic formula for damage effectiveness on the Hemocyte that we used on the Hydra List, you find that your damage is actually only dealing 37.5% of the damage that you would be dealing to the Hemocyte. Now remember, this basic formula that I showed you does not account for armor. And remember, we are ignoring 50% of the armor because the Infested Sinew has a 50% damage weakness to radiation. So to find out what our actual damage multiplier is here with the armor intact, I'm going to be showing you the full formula with the armor calculation. And just to preface this, this is one of the more complicated formulas in the game, so I'm going to do my best to explain each step and what it's actually calculating for. So it starts out with the same damage effectiveness formula that we used before. You take 1 plus the hit points modifier, and then you multiply that by 1 plus the armor modifier. So for the hemocyte here, we have 1.5 times 0.25. Now the second half of this formula calculates for the total current armor of the Hemocyte, which will then give us an accurate damage modifier based on the enemy's current armor total. And remember, for this example, I'm using a Hemocyte with full armor. And I'm going to pretend that it's the strongest Hemocyte you can fight at level 84. And at level 84, the enemy has 1,808 armor with a damage reduction of 85.77%. So for the second half of this formula, we take 1 plus the enemy's current armor, which in our case is 1,808.67, and then we multiply that by 1 minus our armor modifier. So in this case, we're radiation, so it's 0.5 for the armor modifier. All we're doing here by multiplying the armor by the armor modifier is basically just giving us the modified armor total. So because we're radiation and we're ignoring 50% of the current total armor, this is multiplying the enemy's current total armor by 0.5, which gives us half the enemy's current armor. And then we're dividing by 300 and then adding 1 to the whole thing. And what this number does is tell us how much our damage effectiveness is hurt by the enemy's current total armor. So the lower this number is, the better, and the higher, the more damage the enemy is actually preventing with their armor. Here we got 4.01, which is a pretty low number overall. And then once we have this number, we then take our first number that we got, which is 1.375, and we divide that by 4.01, which then gives us our damage modifier, which in this case is 0 0.0934. So for every 100 damage we're dealing with radiation, we're basically only dealing 9 damage to the enemy. Now on the flip side of this, the Hemocyte has plus 75% increased damage to its fossilized health, but no weakness to corrosive damage to its armor. Meaning that while the enemy does take increased corrosive damage, it doesn't ignore any of the armor. So let's figure out what the damage effectiveness of corrosive damage is to the Hemocyte at full armor. And then we'll compare that to radiation damage, which ignores 50% of the armor. But I won't make you guys sit through the whole formula again, so let's just take a look at the damage modifier. The damage modifier for corrosive is 0.2489. Meaning that for every 100 points of damage we're dealing to the Hemocyte, we're actually dealing 24.8, which is almost three times the amount of the radiation damage. So even though the radiation damage here ignores the armor, it's still less effective than using corrosive damage at full health. And then of course, if you were able to strip the armor completely off, it would deal even more damage. But I just wanted to point out that the radiation damage here, even though it's effective against the armor, is hurt tremendously by the health's resistance. And like I said, it's a pretty out there example and the only one in-game that I know of. But I do think it displays why damage effectiveness is important to understand. Because if you were to just build around the armor, then the radiation damage would actually do less than the corrosive damage. And largely, if you just want to understand what damage is going to be good against what armor and health type, you can just use a simple formula of 1 plus the health modifier times 1 plus the armor modifier. And while this formula doesn't account for the enemy's modified armor, it is a lot simpler to do this than it is to figure out what the armor is every single time. Although I will say that if an enemy has armor and its health is neutral to whatever damage type the armor is weak to, it's usually preferable to use a damage type that will ignore armor unless you're stripping off the armor some other way because armor is a very very good way for enemies to gain effective health it can make them a lot tankier when you're trying to kill them but if there's one thing you take away from this video it's that an armor's weakness to a certain damage type not only increases your damage but also reduces the amount of effective armor you're dealing that damage against which is why for the Eidolons we want to strip down as much as possible without removing all of it because you're getting a lot more increased damage by having both the health and the armor together instead of just the health 
because the health only has a plus 25% weakness to radiation damage, and the health and the armor together effectively have 118% weakness to radiation. And like I said, in a lot of situations in the game, you're not really going to need to worry about this because you're going to be dealing so much damage to the enemies that the damage effectiveness almost won't matter. But in case you're doing like some kind of long survival mission or whatever, and you're encountering really high level enemies, then it can definitely make a difference and it's worth knowing. Plus, I find it kind of fun to min-max my builds around certain missions and enemy types. Anyways, I know this video is kind of dense with some Warframe math, but hopefully I explained the concepts fairly well. I'm hoping that most people will at least learn something they didn't know before about how damage effectiveness works, because I don't really think it's common knowledge on how it works. And if you want to learn more about it or just want more resources, I'll leave them in the links below. But well, that's going to do it for me today, guys. I hope you're all having a good one, and I'll see you later.